Howdy folks, Greyhawk 4x4 coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer. Today is going to be a tabletop role-playing game episode. We're going to talk about a couple of my newest acquisitions to my collection. And uh, we're going to talk about the I series, I for Intermediate series, uh, as a whole, as it uh, pertains to Dungeons & Dragons. So without further ado, let's go. Okay, so I recently acquired the last two modules in the series for the I or Intermediate series uh, for uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons uh, Second Edition uh, modules. Um, I was missing I7 and I14. Uh, now my collection is complete. So I, what I thought we would do is, um, and I'm going to touch on each of those uh, when we get to them. Uh, but I thought real quick what I'd do is I'd just go through the whole series so that you can see what's in it and make a few comments on some of the special items that are in the in the series uh, as well. Um, so let's start off. Um, I-1, uh, Dwellers of the Forbidden City. And you can see there it says an adventure for characters levels 4 through 7. The I... Uh, w meaning intermediate, uh, was created, I guess, for characters in those levels. The 4 to 7, 5 to 10, you know, or 5 to 8, somewhere in there, w what they at that time considered intermediate levels. Um, and I don't know how that, uh, by today's standards, if that would still, I guess that would still hold true, that those would be, because you're not tech, you're not really a high level character, you're not. I mean, I guess at level four you'd still be kind of low level, you know. But if you go by like first edition, you know, um, at fourth level you're starting to um, uh, get out of your. You're, you're becoming a journeyman adventurer, let's say. So I guess that would ring true, and, and even today. Um, so that was the reason that they created this series. Because, as you know, the old TSR loved to, to code all of their modules with a, a, a letter and then followed by the numbers. G1 through 3, D as in, you know, uh, uh, depths, uh, 1 through 3, you know, and all that. So um, they did the I series for intermediate. So there is no, with the exception of a few, there's no connection with a lot of these modules. They're all standalone modules, but they're put in this series because of the level range. So that leads us to the next one. So the next one is the, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I gotta go back. So uh, the very first one, I-1, I Dwellers of the Forbidden City. Uh, this was a tournament module. Um, it was used um, in 1980 uh, as a uh, tournament module for TSR. Um, it doesn't say here exactly, you know, where it was played or whatever, but that was what it was created for. Um, and then they made it as a, um, they released it as a, uh, as a product. So, uh, then the second one, uh, this one, uh, I don't, don't believe was ever a tournament module. I think they just made this one as a standalone product. Uh, this is Tomb of the Lizard King. And again, the, this is for character levels five through seven, um, this uh, takes place in, um, uh, obviously, the Lizard King. Uh, it, it takes place in a swampy uh, area of the map. And uh, any of these that I'm going to show, most of them were designed with the world of Greyhawk uh, in mind as to, as to where um, you could place these. But they could be placed in any game world, you know, um, homebrew, whatever. Um, but each of them pretty much gives... An idea of where you could uh, you could place it in World of Greyhawk if that is your campaign setting. So, um, moving on. Now the next one is actually a series, uh, and this this is probably the most famous. Well, this and Ravenloft are probably the most famous um, of the I series. Uh, this is the Desert of Desolation series, and this is the first one. So this is I three. And this is Pharaoh. And as you can see by the picture on there, 
this has a uh, an uh, Arabian Nights uh, ancient Egypt uh, look to it because it's got the pyramids and the pharaohs. It's called Pharaoh. Um, so this one, um, I've played through this. I never DM'd it, but I actually played through it. Uh, I had someone D DM it for our group back in California, and um, this is an incredible series. Everybody needs to, if you play D&D, you need to have someone run you through the Desert of Desolation series. Um, this uh, was created by uh, Tracy and Laura Hickman, um, who also did Ravenloft. Um, and I was lucky enough um, on the, the Ravenloft one to get their, their autograph. I still, next time I see them, I need to get them uh, to sign this one for me. Um, so this one, uh, if you're looking at the Greyhawk map, um, the Sea of Dust is a great place to, to place these uh, these modules. So the next one in the series was I-4, Oasis of the White Palm, and there you have a picture of the genie. Um, and then the final one was the Lost Tomb of Martek, the I-5. And... Um, Again, these are uh, I three is five through seven, I four six through eight, and I five seven through nine. So you can see there's a progression there, an expected progression of the character levels as they go. But they all fall into that intermediate range. Um, then we get into I six, which is Ravenloft, uh, which I'm sure I've talked about many times. Um, but uh, and this is the one that I have the uh, the signatures in um, from Tracy and Laura Hickman. So that one is uh, that one's one of my prized possessions there. Um, so I've done other videos on Ravenloft, so I'm not going to go into great detail. Uh, you can find it on my channel if you want to uh, look at my Ravenloft collection. I, I did a full video on all my Ravenloft stuff. So um, anyway, uh, that is I six. Uh, and that one says character levels um, 5 to 7 again. So there you are with the uh, intermediate range. Now, this is one of the uh, ones I just acquired. Uh, this is one of the ones I was missing. I-7, Baltron's Beacon. And this one, um, I could have gotten a little cheaper than I got it. But uh, what I did was I bought it at, on auction from a place called the Collector's Trove. Now I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Um, I thought long and hard about this because by telling you guys this, that means that there's going to be more competition for me if I decide to bid on things on Collector's Trove. But I felt um, that I needed to be loyal to my watchers, to my subscribers, um, and let you guys know this. If you do not know about the Collector's Trove, you need to know about it. If you are in any way, shape, or form a tabletop role-playing person, um, uh, the guy, Paul Stromberg, that runs it, that owns it, um, that is all he does, is he does auctions for role-playing game collections. And he is the premier auctioneer of those types of materials. And this is what you get if you buy uh, from one of his auctions. You get a certificate that looks like this. Uh, certificate of Authenticity for the item. It gives a full description. Um, and then it gives a very detailed history of not only the item itself, but whoever the collection, whoever, whoever's collection it came from. Um, he, gives, he gives a background on, on why... Uh, they were what they did in the game industry, and um, why it warranted him being the one to auction off that collection. Because from what I can tell, he's pretty selective on 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 what who he'll do auctions for and so forth. Um, but you can tell he puts a lot of time. He's very detail oriented, um, and so I I got this one. This one was part of the Jim and Laura Rosloff. Uh, collection, their uh, their collection that was being auctioned off. Uh, Jim is no longer with us. He was an old school TSR employee, and the reason that this one was special to me is that Jim is the one who did all the illustrations for this module. 
uh, he did a lot of illustrations for a lot of the old school TSR modules. Uh, so everything in here, uh, this was Jim's, what they call a comp copy. This was his free copy for working at TSR that he was given. Um, and this was being auctioned off by his wife, whose signature shows up there, um, Laura. And um, so I could have got it cheaper, but I spent a little bit more um, because I wanted the connection there. I wanted the, uh, um, the story there with the certificate and everything and to know that, that I own something that one of these guys that did all these great illustrations, um, I actually had one of his personal copies. So that is the story behind that one. So that's one of the ones I just got. Um, that leads us into I-8, uh, The Ravager of Time. I don't know a lot about this one. Um, I have it in my collection. Um, I don't know a lot about it, but I'm guessing there's time travel involved. Um, I hope so, and uh, I look forward to either uh, DMing this or playing through it at some point. It has the British uh, Union Jack there, so I'm guessing this was a um, uh, a British uh, by, by British developers that the British arm of TSR that developed this. Uh, that's generally what that meant. And this says character levels eight through ten. Um, I-9, um, the day of Al-Akbar, and again, this is another uh, Arabian Nights, um, that type of, uh, you know, ancient Egypt type of a setting it looks like, and this is for, again, character levels 8 through 10. Um, yeah, it's talking about a sultan. Yeah, I've never played through this one, but it's talking about a sultan in the capital city of, Ka uh, of Kaibar. Um, so it's obviously um, something... My guess is that could be tied in... Be the character levels would tie in at the end of the Desert of Desolation series. Um, if I'm DMing, and when I do my Greyhawk campaign, I maybe, maybe I'll do that. I'll do the Desert of Desolation series, and then I'll tie this one in at the end. Because the character levels look like they'll all line up, and it's all the same type of a setting. So, um, there's an idea for that. Um, here's I-10. I-10 is the sequel to Ravenloft. This is Ravenloft 2, the house on Griffin Hill. And I have not played or DM'd that one. So, uh, at some point, I'm sure I will. Um, I-11 uh, is by Frank Metzner. And Frank... Um, uh, is one of the really old school TSR guys who uh, developed a lot of stuff. Uh, he's famous for the what's called the Beckme basic expert uh, um, companion um, masters and immortal series of um, rule books for basic D&D. &D. Um, and he created this one. This is Needle. And that is for character levels 8 through 10 again. Uh, so you're seeing kind of a, a theme there of where the character levels are falling in. Um, and I believe, I, it doesn't say that on here, but I'm almost certain this was a tournament module at one time. So, and this has, um, you know, pre-generated characters and stuff in it with color, all color stuff. And so um, this is, you know, you're starting to get one of the, the newer ones, um, as the numbers get higher, they were later released. Um, I-12. Now, this is a special one. I've done a video about Frank Metzner, um, all the works that he did um, to include Needle and all that um, in a separate video. I'll put a link below if you guys want to go see that because it's, it's, it's a whole separate video. And I go into detail about this. Uh, this is Egg of the Phoenix, which is basically a compilation an updated compilation of the original four tournament modules, R1, R2, R3, and R4, um, that were only available to RPGA members back in the day, Role Playing Games Association members back in the day. And if you can find them now, they are, if you were to get an entire set, you're talking about $1,200 to $1,500 if you can find a set of those. Um, so what they did is they created this super module that basically kind of put all that content together. And again, I'll put that link below. You guys can go check it out. 
at your leisure because I go into a lot more detail. Um, then we get into I-13, which is the Adventure Pack 1, which is a series of just uh, short adventures that they all they they just decided to put into one big book. Um, so uh, it doesn't have any range on the character levels or anything else like that, but again, it's intermediate, so it's going to be in that same level range. Um, and then finally, and this was the last one, the, the last one I added to the I, so I have all of the I series now completed. Uh, you have I-14, which is Swords of the Iron Legion, and this is the only one that has the Forgotten Realms uh, game world attached to it. Um, this is very unique. This is uh, for levels 6 to 8, um, or no, 6 to 8 characters, levels 1 through 15. So it's very strange. Um, and this is very unique because uh, this is to be used with the battle system that um, that TSR came out with for large-scale army battles in D&D. Um, so it's a very unique piece uh, to be used for if you wanted to do tabletop, uh, not necessarily war gaming, but you're doing role-playing game stuff with armies, you know, of, um, of units and things like that. Um, so it's a very unique. I've never used the battle system. I'm collecting with this. Is, I've got some other pieces to work with the battle system, so I'll probably incorporate that at some point. Um, but I had to get it just because I'm a completionist, and I wanted to be able to say I have the entire ice area closed out now, which so now I do. Um, that is a little bit longer of a video than I wanted to do. It's over 16 minutes, but I wanted to go through everything. If you stuck it out this long, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and um, we'll catch you guys on the flip side.